Hey guys, welcome to another broadcast on Comic Trade. And um, if you're watching this on um, on YouTube, thank you for uh, checking us out. Uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, the more, the merrier. And um, it only takes one little click of the button. Today, we're, I'm talking to Konstantinos uh, Petrosellos, uh, yes. a Greek artist based in Estonia, a independent um, creator uh, of silk and um, metal term. Uh, he's um, he's a gets his he's an independent independent creator getting his work published through uh, Horizons and Comics, as you know that I'm part of that scene. And uh, we get our books ourselves published through there as well. So welcome, uh, Constantinos. Welcome to our show. And uh, hey, um, take it away. Uh, introduce yourself and let people know who you are and how it's going over there in Estonia. Sure. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's good to be here. My name is Constantinos. I I am from Greece, I live in Estonia for the last three years. Uh, I am the creator of Steel and Metal Team series. It's like a science fiction superhero story. And four issues uh, have been published so far. That was the uh, Arc 1, and now I'm producing Arc 2. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it took me a while till I find a publisher around a year, but uh, I got to know. I got to see how many uh, people out there uh, publish and uh, are passionate about comics. Still, at the time came that I found Rising Sun Comics and they gave a home to my book. That was that was really wonderful. And I got to know many uh, nice people there, especially uh, Hawk Sanders. Uh, and uh, he has been like a, a mentor to me in, in some things. You know, I, I, I constantly get improved, experimenting and learning on the craft. Yeah, and he can see my improvement too, which is also very nice. So you're a Greek artist and you, um, how long have you been an artist and in, in, um, you know, creating comic books and stuff and writing? Um, basically, um, I, I, I draw, since a very young age, and then I found comics uh, around uh, the age of, of eight or something. Started from Disney titles and going to American ones and uh, Franco Belgian ones, and uh, later of other countries. Uh, so let's just say that I started seriously creating my own comic book around uh, 2014, but before that, I was developing different. Uh, types of plots and creating new characters. I just didn't have an organized plan about how they will come to be in the form of a project. So let's just say that I started with this uh, with this one, Steel Can Metal Team in 2014, doing issue one, and uh, yeah. So um, tell us about this character. Um, what what is this book about? Yeah, well, basically, this, uh, this, this the story takes place uh, in the end of uh, the 21st uh, century in the city called New Glory. And there we have a humanoid called Steel and his cyborg partner, Timothy Vince, known also as Metal Team. And uh, there is this uh, tragedy connecting them uh, of, uh, of a lady called Annabel Darcel, who is responsible for creating Steel through means of science and occultism. And so a few months after his manifestation, this threat of uh, monstrosities uh, nicknamed as nightmares takes, uh, starts taking over the city. These two uh, team and still uh, have uh, to, to stop this thread and find out how still connects to this thread. And in the meantime, we meet other characters. And, you know, as time goes by, there is the strong possibility that still can be basically even a bigger threat than the nightmare monster they face. It has its twists and surprises. I try to make it interesting. And it's basically 12 issue series, um, consisted basically of three arcs. And it's connected to six other titles that will hopefully follow, uh, all part of the same universe. But each series, for the most part, can stand independently for itself. Okay, so how did you come up with the idea for this book? Well, basically, it's all, it all started with a dream I had back in 2007. I was first grade of uh, high school, and uh, I, I saw basically uh, the, uh, the character of Steel uh, falling off a cliff towards a huge 
crowd of myriads of um, colorful like monstrosities who were waiting for him to fall and he started fighting them and uh, so i hear them calling him with this name and so i woke up instantly made sketches kept notes then i went back to it in 2011 and i added the character of team of metal team and later again in 2014 i was at university of fine arts at that time and so i started making the first issue so basically for the biggest part, the first four issues are, you know, they host my, they saw my old work. And as I said, as time goes by, I get improved. I change my style in some areas and I learn more things. So I do my best for the next books to be even better. And, uh, but, but uh, you know, we were talking with Hope that there is a possibility at some point we will make a trade park, uh, sorry, uh, a trade paperback of the first four right. issues. And later of the of arc two and arc three, um, and uh, yeah, I, I can talk you know more about arc two also mm. if you want. So I find that your your artwork here is quite unique, and it's not really kind of like uh, what we're used to in the sense of like um, you know um, European style or American style or say like um, manga or manhwa. Uh, so. How did you decide that you this is the art style that you're going to arrive at? Is this because of what you are used to doing? Because, I mean, it is very, very finely detailed. I mean, if you look at this, there's so much uh, the detail in the coloring uh, and the sketches and stuff. And how do you, you know, this, decide that this is the way you want this book to look? I mean, there is some amazing, um, you know, character, character designs here that I'm quite excited about. Uh, and so... You know, how did you arrive that this is the art style? Because it seems very different to everything else that's going on. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, you know, I still, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting my art style uh, developing. Uh, you know, some of these things there I wouldn't draw the same way anymore. But uh, uh, my influences had been uh, both American and European artists. Uh, like, I learned, like, the the separation, the distinction between light and shadow from Frank Miller, for example, uh, through the his Sin City series. Or I learned about, uh, uh, you know, the complexity of a plot and designs through Moebius, you know, the French artist. Uh, yeah, Moebius. Yeah, yeah, Moebius. And, uh, and there are so many other people I could mention. And there is always something that I learned from everyone. Uh, and also maybe a very few influences from uh, uh, fine arts like painting, like one years with the dots, you know, I mean, this old work yeah. there was the shadows consisting from dots and stuff. Yeah. And uh, as I said, it's a, it's a process of experimentation and, and constant improvement. As long as there is passion and, and practicing, you know, it's, it's going to so. So you've said that it's about four, um, you've already got, uh, are you working the fourth one now, or is, is the fourth one already out? This is the third one I'm holding up here. So, yeah. so uh, the fourth one uh, came out in, uh, I think it was, uh, let me see, ah, May fifteenth, twenty nineteen. So okay. this is, so this is the fourth one here. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I enjoyed every every part of the pro of the creative process for these books I did basically basically I do everything on this book or almost everything yeah. it's like uh, I write the plot I direct the pages how it's gonna be spread through the panels I do pencil mm -hmm. syncs and for the first four issues I did uh, also color uh, by hand the lettering uh, I did through a program now instead I will handle well, this let's talk about the coloring process because I know I mean myself and a lot of everybody, you know, high probably about ninety percent of the world right now in the comic industry colors by digital. Yes. So, how did you decide that you want to do coloring by hand and not digital at this at this portion of, you know, the first art? Well, uh, you know, uh, since uh, I decided to go to the school of fine arts, and since I was I'm drawing since the age of three, I go to connect uh, too close with, uh, you know, with pencil, color, color pencils, pastels and materials of this nature. And uh, I'm not very much familiar with electronic, uh, with digital like coloring. And, it's, and uh, you know, I think I am connected more to the traditional ways. And of course, there is always time 
hopefully <laughs> to to learn new things and to improve on yeah. your craft but uh, you know i think i appreciate i will always appreciate more the traditional ways and um mm. And I enjoy when I see artists of the past decades doing that. I just connect myself with with them. I can't do otherwise. Um, and uh, and I decided to give it a go for the first four books. Now yeah, I, I handle things a little differently, but I, and I can talk about it. You know. Mm. So, uh, are you going to stay with doing um? coloring by hand or were you looking to go on to doing some you know digital as well well uh, I, I'm still learning about the digital part but as we have discussed with with hook um, there is uh, you know I'm gonna publish this uh, this next two arcs as black and white so I basically do everything like before but I don't do the coloring by hand and when the time comes to release a, a a trade paperback of art two and three this we think for them to be in color so maybe some digital artists can handle this for us and yeah yeah that's how but, um i mean a lot of us i mean i was talking to um oh i forgot his name now sorry um let me just get that book in front of me so i can remember here we are um jason long yesterday and um, he uses a program called, uh, which I use myself and I've used for the last whew, uh, 15 odd years, called, um, which is now called um, Clip Studio Paint. Uh -huh. and, um, and he used it, you know, when we started using it, it was called uh, Manga Art Studio. But of course, someone, you know, in the, in the Western field decided, well, that's a wrong name to use, even though it's the best name you could use for it for a, um, a software that's probably the best software in the world when it comes to digital comic design. Because it's, I mean, like, I when I started using it, it was like, it's made everything so simple for me. Because mm -hmm. especially when I'm not an, a, you know, a comic artist, if you're not a comic artist, getting a program that actually has everything laid out for you, it's like, it's like a godsend. And uh, so, I mean, it's that's something you know i'll send you a link to suss out and look at but i mean i don't i don't personally don't mind the art style and i think it's quite interesting because i think you there's room for every art style there is possible in the comic industry because you're always going to find that someone's always li like something that's not what you like and or what i like they might not like and so i mean i've got you know i've got probably a couple thousand comics that i just collect because i like it um, you know, or I just have it because I found that it looks good or the writing's good and it's not always the arts that are going to stick out to me or not only the writing that's going to stick out to me. Sometimes I'll just co collect the comic book for the cover alone, right? Wow. I'll pay that, you know, I'll pay that $10 and, oh, there's a nice cover, put it away in a sleeve and never read it ever again. But sometimes pull it out and go, oh, you know, there it is. But I think... Um, and that's a good thing about now as an independent creator is that there is a avenue for all of us who are outside of the mainstream, like say Marvel, DC, Image, uh, uh, Dark Horse, IDW, which is on its way out. You yeah. know, um, there is opportunity for independent creators to just do whatever they want that they love, as long as they have a passion in that. As long as the story is good, people will, you know, you can get online and go, this is what I have. This is my book. Please, you know, check it out. And, you know, and people see that, like, it took, you know, people think that comic books, it just takes, uh, you can pull it out in a week or something, in a month. It takes years to do this stuff, you know. And, I mean, with myself, it took me about five, probably about ten years to put one of my um, books out. Because after a while, you get tired of it. You go away. You come back and think about it. So with the second arc, how long did it take you to do, I mean, how long did it take you to the first start from start to finish? Uh, each book um, took me around four months to produce. Mm. Uh, so we started, I mean, yeah, I had already basically uh, two issues ready uh, when uh, I met uh, with Hook. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was keep producing the, the last two uh, books. 
uh, for them to release in their respective dates. And now I'm almost done with the next issue, issue one of R2 or issue five, if you want to take them all together. And uh, but this time <laughs> I use bigger size paper, A3 size. I think it's 11 by 17 in feet and mm -hmm. in inches. Uh, before I had A4, smaller. Pre yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I found more joy in the bigger uh, paper uh, because it, yeah. it, it kind of gives me more, the more like a pro professional feeling and I can uh, focus on details more. I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. I can show you even some pages if you wish. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, this is basically uh, page one from mm. this, uh, from Mark two. And uh, it's gonna it's going to be black and white lettering is by hand. I studied all the rules that I try to do my best every time. So yeah. And uh, another one I can show is uh, page four here. See, this is this is the also um you know the original way of doing comics where you do it everything by hand. Yeah. Know, where now you know now it's digital, and I'm actually quite excited to see people do it by hand. I mean, I've got some of my friends who work by hand. I can't. I, I I just. I mean, it takes me a week to do a page, but I do it digitally, right? Yeah. I, you know, I I still draw by hand on the on the pad, mm -hmm. but it's not the same feeling of doing it on paper. And when I was young, you know, I I used to do um, Iron Maiden, right? Uh -huh. I I could basically do anything with the Iron Maiden character of Eddie, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so, but when I lost my, the use of my hand, I just gave up and I lost 20 years of my art, you know, illustration stuff. Yes. So that's why when I came back to doing it, for me, digitally was good. But the other thing is that there is a very um, visceral, um, interesting way when you're actually uh, doing it from on paper, right? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it, it's like you're. It's it's totally amazing to be able to do that. And I and I do a lot of drawings myself, like for my other art art stuff, like your physical paintings and stuff by hand. But I think, you know, to see someone actually go back and do the traditional art by hand for comic books is very interesting. And I think this is something that you can actually go. This, you know, here's my page, right? This yeah. is everything here I did myself. I didn't put it on a computer. And I think you holding that up is amazing because you can see all the details of that. And um, I think the other thing is that you can't, you know, you have to get prints of digitals, whereas you can have the original work. Here it is. True. And, um, you know, and you could, and, you know, if you do like something like crowdfunding, you get to sell original work, which some people like. And I would be interested in buying a piece of original work myself because then, you know, I've, I can frame it and it's up there um, as a collector. Of comic yes. books you know and i think a lot of people are like me they uh they enjoy seeing traditional work as much as you know digital work is out there seeing you know someone like me i can actually usually tell who's using what program digitally to do what now because it's so much of it out there um but um yeah traditional traditional comic art is amazing and i think uh doing you know being someone who does that that's amazing so congratulations on actually doing traditional comic books um you know the original way and i think uh, you know we've we've got people locally who do fanzines and stuff like that you know um zines putting their own comic books together through like um you know little handmade uh, magazines and stuff yeah, yeah which is cool so uh what what's happening in the second arc you know that you just held up there um uh, the second arc basically continues from where it stopped and I always try to leave a cliffhanger with its uh, issue to make it interesting because that's, you know, I, at the same time I, I try to put myself into the reader's shoes but in the end I have to be honest with myself and do and show the vision that I like first and foremost yeah. and hopefully there is gonna there is going to be an audience that there is already some audience and more people get to know their work uh, and um, and uh, basically, uh, the characters uh, here uh, get to meet uh, some new players uh, into the field. That the, the you know their life. We we get to know more of their life. There are flashbacks and uh, we, you know and inner dialogues throughout the story. Uh, and I think this is very important. Or the quiet scenes are very important because action is is good, is cool. But uh, I also wanna you know make the reader 
think uh, about some things uh, and get into into the character's mind. Uh, I think this is very important uh, for a story. And um, I mean, we are gonna have uh, some uh, a very big. Uh, big uh, characters in terms of of the role that they play and uh, some of them are key uh, elements for the next titles that will follow because they will keep appearing there too and i think no i think i'm sure actually that in this series we are gonna i'm going to introduce those characters mm -hmm. through specific uh, circumstances people can see how these characters will look like yeah Let's talk about Estonia um, at the moment. I mean, you, um, we were talking off camera before about um, how you actually ended up in Estonia. Tell us about that. Uh, basically, <clears throat> I I got to know uh, this uh, girl <laughs> uh, in uh, 2013 through email, and then we started talking uh, on Skype. And uh, around 2017, I finished uh, with my barrage obligations uh and uh, so after knowing each other and she she kept visiting me every few months you know yeah. uh, uh she had her already her job here and uh we decided like you know i'm going to come there and see what uh, we can both make out of it in terms of you know of settling down work and all that and so far it's been uh, you know it's not it hasn't been without its up and down uh, side but uh, for the most part it is smooth my family is is there for me. Her family is here for me, and she is here for me. Most importantly, she supports my work. She believes in me, and um, basically, since 2017, I live here. I learn about their culture and language whenever I have some time, and um, you know, I, I have basically more of my own space to create, and yeah. that's something that I was uh, longing for for quite some time. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, being Greek, how hard was it to learn Est Estonian? Uh, I'm still learning them, and it's uh, quite uh, quite hard because, uh, you know, it's a language that uh, derives from the old high uh, German, as they say, and uh, I think, no, it has many influences from that language, but I think it's, it is as a linguist would say, it, it is from proto Finnish. So Finnish people at Estonia have very uh, close relation in their language, but um, but it's not like the European ones, like Spanish, Italian, French, and English are connected. You know, it's not like that. It's a different thing. So yeah, it takes quite uh, some time to to learn about it. That I'm still learning. You know, I'm a beginner. Yeah. Uh, I mostly use English for my work here. I work with international schools as art teacher, and I have been a portrait and caricature artist as well, with guests from many from many countries. I do commissions from time to time, and yeah, I keep myself. So, uh, so are you? Did you say you were teaching art as well? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I, I am a substitute art teacher for uh, all ages, basically, and. Uh, I apply for other schools too in the meantime. And uh, I have uh, prepared lessons to teach comic books too, if anyone is interested. Uh, and I can also teach, you know, regular uh, fine art like uh, uh, lessons like how to, you know, to uh, understand light and shadows and colors and basically teach painting. I can do that too. Yeah. Excellent. So, um What's it like right now uh, in Estonia? Like you know, with the pandemic and stuff. Tell us a bit, bit about the culture situation there now. Uh, well, um, as I have, we have heard here, there there has been like around four hundred incidents out of one million uh, people population, uh, and and there are you know there has been a lockdown since since middle of March, and around May first things are gonna come back gradually like to a normal pace, hopefully till May 15th. I think this procedure will be complete. In the meantime, uh, people are still kind of, there is a calm, uh, you know, environment. Some people go out and all that. There is not a danger to be arrested or anything like that. Uh, so there's yeah. not this type of pressure, but still people try to be careful. But, you know, for the most part, things are calm, which I think is very important in situations like yeah. this to keep things calm and peaceful, you know. Have so, there been many like um, 
Well, like, I mean, you guys, uh, like in Estonia, there's a million, uh, million people. We have about uh, 4.7 here in New Zealand. And we've only had something like about, I think, maybe 13 deaths so far. What's the numbers uh, there? Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm not so glad to, to refer to in, in like uh, as in the form of percentage. Uh, I'm just, um, I think um, uh, for the most part, it's it's people uh, that are of like middle or to old age. Uh, children are are fine for the most part. I don't I haven't heard any child incident, and uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, as I said, uh, I, there is not this like intense uh, uh, atmosphere like back in my homeland, Greece, where things are kind of different than here. Yeah. Um, so they, you guys are coming out of um, lockdown, pro like for us, um, you're going into it's like level three, which is you can actually go out and do business, but still um, still have a distance. Uh, yeah. Do you think people, do you think Estonia is prepared for that enough to be able to do that? Or are there people too casual about it? uh i mean uh, people here for some reason are like uh more they, they don't go much into protesting i don't know why <laughs> uh but uh, uh you know i think most people are able to work from home you know there is no problem in terms of income um uh, for the most part i don't know what's going on with the businesses like uh, nightclubs or cafeterias or cinema theaters uh, i think they they get uh uh, some money from the government in the meantime yeah yeah well excellent um thank you for talking with us and wrapping wrapping up is there anything you'd like to um say well um i wanna i want to say to comic to people who want to do their own comic book project especially or, or create in general you know we need artists people think like uh, that the artists maybe are not practically very useful but you know uh, I, I believe you know people have a soul and they need to feed it as well not only their body so they need art uh, they need creativity and passion and i think a comic book craft is something that shows it all and uh, i take it very seriously you know it may be not my main source of income but i consider it a job and it's knowledge and skills you know and I, I respect it as an art form i consider it one and I say, do, as I said to my first four issues, I had a kind of, of line there in the artist page, and I wrote uh, basically devoted to those who never quit and do their best until their goals and dreams come true. So basically, do not quit, okay? Especially if it's yeah. something you love, just go for it and not quit. At least don't regret, do not regret it later. Do it. Hmm. That's good. I mean, you, you're right there because I think. Um, People do sort of think that art isn't that important, but when they realize when it's not there, then they then they go, where is it? This is something we need. And like, if we look around, art is everything. Like anything we do, we're designing and stuff. Like you know, images it it does feed our soul and it keeps us our mental health, um, you know, balanced. So thank yeah. you for talking to us, uh, Constantinos. Uh, all the best over there in Estonia and um, to your family and to your partner. And thank you guys for watching. My name's Malfunction. Uh, check us out on um, online on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, as well yeah. as on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you for checking us out. Kakitiano. Yeah.